to go. Okay, so it's really annoying. I've noticed it on all my podcasts. Okay, so, okay, so, not annoying at all. Um, okay, so why would I change it now that I say to that? Uh, we've done permutations so far, correct? And permutations, or a fundamental counting principle was the first thing we did. And we can only use fundamental counting principle. I also know on my podcast I talk really fast, so I have to intentionally talk ridiculously slow in my head so that it's normal speed to you because I talk really fast and I can't help myself. It's an addiction. First step is denial. And past that, I'm at admittance. Um, I still suck at it, though. So if I start speed talking, you're like, let's do some of this. It'll slow me down, you know? Just, oh, yeah, right. I'm speed talking. Oh, so what was that? Fundamental counting principle. The only way we can use fundamental counting principle is if we have parts, different parts that make up the whole thing, right? And we can only choose one of each part, correct? So in each blank we draw, we can put only one thing in there. One letter, one digit, one car, one number to a code, stuff like that, right? So that's fundamental counting principle. And we can use it when we have all different parts that make up the whole thing but we need one of each thing, right? Then we went to permutations, and permutations are when order matters. So for example, if I was picking three people to be in a group, correct? And I had a group of 10 people, and I was picking three people to be in the group, that's it. Would the order matter in which I picked those three? I picked three people to be in a group. Did the order matter in which I picked those three? Did it make them any more special if they were picked first, second, or third? Nope. Combination, that's what we're doing today. If I had 10 people and I was picking a three person group, but I was picking a president, a vice president, and a secretary, would the order matter that I picked them? Yes, then it would be a permutation, order would matter. That's the difference between combination and permutation. Combination is you're picking three people, so you look at that pick, the people you're picking and does it matter in which I pick? Does it make them any more special? No, combination, order doesn't matter. If the three people I'm picking I gave jobs to or positions on a team, then it would be a permutation, okay? Permutations also come from license plates, codes, phone numbers, anything that if I order it in a different way, it makes me something different, okay? So <clears throat> if it's a permutation without repetitions, like I said, 10 people and I was picking three of them to form a subcommittee of a president, a vice president, and a secretary, I could go three blank and go 10 times 9 times 8, or I could go 10 P3 because it's a permutation, right? That's why I'm picking three and it's a permutation. If, let's say we're going into today's lesson, I have 10 people and I'm picking three to be in a group, a subgroup, and that's it. Now, do those three matter which order I pick them? No. Can I go 10 times 9 times 8? No. The moment I go 10 times 9 times 8, it's a permutation. Because <clears throat> remember, 10 times 9 times 8 can be represented by 10P3, correct? So on combinations, people will go do blanks and they'll go 10 times 9 times 8. That's instantly a permutation, right? Because 10 times 9 times 8 is 10P3. We know that. We know that that's how it works. So can I go blanks if it's a C? If it's a combination? Can I do the blanks? No, I'm going to have to go 10, C3, and that's my only option, right? Okay. <clears throat> the formula for combination is this. NCR, I don't know, this is, you probably don't have it. Did it not print the fact or for fraction? Okay, so it's NCR equals N factorial over N minus R factorial, which was actually the P formula, wasn't it? But what are we adding? Uh, R factorial on the bottom. Why? Why would we add an R factorial on the bottom if this is one where order doesn't matter? Where did we find where we put extra factorials on the bottom? When did we ever do that? Last lesson we did it. We divided by extra factorials on the bottom. Why? Yes, when we have repetition, we would have divided, like if we had two A's, right? We divided by two factorial. We agree? So the reason why we're dividing by R factorial, can you speculate why we might do that? This is actually the permutation formula 
with a division of r factorial. Why would we take the permutation formula and divide by r factorial to make the combination? We divided by the factorial before to get rid of the repetitions, didn't we? We're dividing by the r factorial this time to get rid of the cases where they're actually different. Because combination, order doesn't matter, right? So say I stood you in a line, I would go say number one, two, three, then I could go one, three, two, right? Then I could go three, two, one, then I could go three, one, two, then I could go two, one, three, two, three, one. I could get six different situations if it was permutation, right? If order mattered, didn't it? We agree? If order doesn't matter, if I have three people and I'm going to choose all three of them, how many ways can I do that? One, right? It gets rid of all of these situations where they're all different because they're not. I literally go, I have three people, I'm going to pick all three. Done. One way. If I'm taking three people and then I'm arranging them for a photo, then I'm back to this case where order matters. Very different, right? I have, if I go to the library and I have to take out three books, okay? But I didn't return my textbook, which you all need to do if you haven't already. And I didn't return my textbook, so I'm only allowed to take one book out a month. Okay, but I, I know I have three that I want to take out. If that's the case, I go to the um, library that first, let's say September, and I take out one book, right? But I have three choices of books to take out for the month of September. Then I go in the month of October and I have two books to take out. Then I go to the month of November and I have one book to take out. So I would have six different ways I could take out those books, correct? But say I'm the good kid who brought back all my textbooks. They said, you know what? You can take all three out in September. And you just hold them till November because we're really nice like that. So you walk in, you walk up to them with your three books. What do you do? You check them out, you throw them in your backpack, you walk away. How many ways does that take? One. The difference between combination, permutation. Permutation order matters, combination it doesn't. Okay? So we're not doing this. So that's why we're dividing by the R factorial. We're getting rid of all these extra cases that don't actually exist when order doesn't matter. So it's a permutation formula with an R factorial in the bottom. All right. One more thing about combination. <clears throat> Combinations can be written in the form NR. It is even shown on your formula sheet over there. It says NCR bracket NR. NCR has nothing. I don't know why NCR they gave it something special. Not quite sure. They did though. So if I had that case where I said I have 10 and I'm choosing 3 to be on a subcommittee, right? They could write it like this. And it would mean C. Okay? It's on your formula sheet. It shows you NCR equals N over R. Okay? You can write it that way. This is another special thing that can only happen with combinations. Type this into your calculator. 10C3. So 10 math probability number 3 this time instead of 2. 10C3. I get 120, correct? What if I did 10P3? Just, I'm going to do that. I'll show you. This is where order matters, right? This is where I'm picking a group of three, but I'm going to, one's going to be president, one's going to be secretary, one's going to be treasurer. 720 ways. So it makes a big difference when you put order in the situation, right? Just like how it was six ways of the textbooks when I gave them order, and one way when I didn't, right? So, ignoring the P part, 10C3 is 120. Now type in 10C7. 10C7. One twenty. It's the same answer. What's the difference between 10 and 3? 7. What's the difference between 10 and 7? 3. This only works for combinations, and I'm going to show you why. So if I did that ten, if I did that same thing where I have ten people and I'm choosing a group of three people to be on the subcommittee, I could put an answer of ten C three, couldn't I? They could also put the answer ten C seven. 
And they would be right because it ends up being the exact same answer, doesn't it? This is why. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to go 10C3 here. And I'm going to go equals 10C7. I'm going to show you why. So we're going to plug it into that formula. The formula is NCR is above. You have it. N factorial over N minus R factorial, R factorial. So that's your formula, right? We're going to plug 10C3 in, and we're going to plug 10C7 in, and we're going to see why, when they have a common difference between them, they get the actual same answer, rather than you just trust me. Okay? I'm glad you trust me, or I want you to understand well. So 10 is going to go in for the N, and 3 is going to go in for the R. So I'm going to get 10 factorial over 10 minus 3 factorial, 3 factorial, equals, and now I'm going to go 10 for the N and 7 for the R. 10 factorial over 10 minus 7 factorial, 7 factorial. So I'm just filling them into that formula. Do you see what I'm doing? Okay. What's 10 minus 3? 7. What's 10 minus 7? 3. They just swap. Because you're doing n minus r, r. They're going to swap if you take the difference between them. So I'm going to get 10 factorial here over 7 factorial, 3 factorial, equals 10 factorial over 3 factorial, 7 factorial. Does it matter when you multiply if they're in opposite order? No. If you went 3 times 3, or sorry, 3 times 4, and you went 4 times 3, you were told in grade 3 that that gave you 12. And you can swap, swap them because they're family pairs. Or I don't know what they call them. But because <laughs> you can swap them, you get the same answer. Okay? So it only works when there's a difference that's the same. So say on a test, you wanted to say, oh, okay, I have 20 and I'm choosing 3 on a subcommittee. But what answer could they give us? 20, C, 17. What else could they have given me? 20, 17. Right? Because that is 20, C, 17. So they can give me that answer because it's the same. Wouldn't this be a wonderful written response? Explain to me why these are the same. You would have to explain that the common difference would cause you, and then you have to show the formulas of both, and you'd have to explain that when you subtract the, the n minus the r, you actually get the same value as the other one. And you have to explain it, right? What happens if they ask you to explain how these are the same, and you just give me two, you just give me this? You just show me the 10C3 to 10C7 formula. You just show that. Would that be enough to get any marks? No, you didn't explain anything. You just, you just did some math. Right? Explain means in words, explain to me why something is the way it is. Okay? So written response where it's just like, here, do a question. Sure, that's procedural. That could happen on a, on a diploma. They're going to have conceptual and problem solving where they're going to make you explain, describe, um, and compare. You will have to do that. It will have to happen. I'm sorry, it's going to happen. Okay? So you want to be prepared and not lose any marks because of that. All right. Uh, we're going to flip over this one. So here we have to win Lotto 649, a person must correctly select six numbers between 1 and 49. Now it's called the Lotto 649 because so you pick six numbers from 1 to 49. Okay? 1 to 49 inclusive. Right? That includes 1 and 49, so that's still 49. Like 1 to 9 was 9 numbers, right? 1 to 49 is 49 numbers. Can we agree? Now we have to decide, does order matter in which I pick those 6? So am I going to go 49C6 or 49P6? Let's read. So it says, and we can't use the C and the P if you can repeat numbers, just so you know. If you can't be able to repeat in order to use that little C and the P. So here it says, to win the lot of 649, a person must correctly select six numbers between 1 and 49. Jasper selected the six numbers from the birth dates of his family, 3, 7, 9, 11, 20, and 29. How many different selections of numbers could, have, could he have made? How many different selections of numbers could he have made? So he's choosing those six, but he could have chosen six at any other time, right? Correct? So how many ways could he choose six numbers? 
The key thing you have to decide is it's all based on this little number here. It's not based on how many you're choosing from. It's based on the R value. You have to decide, does the order of that R value matter? So those six numbers, does the order of them matter? So are they picked in a specific order for the lot of 649? Do you, not have, do you have to get those six numbers in the exact same order they pop out? No. It would be awful if you did. If you had to not only pick the six numbers, but then also get them picked out the same six numbers that they picked them out in order, that would be crazy. Go 49 algebra. 49P6. This is if they pick the numbers. And you had to get them. This is 10. You can use 10 places. That's how huge that number is. So you'd have a one in that chance of winning the lotto. The lotto's hard enough. It would be even harder if you had to pick the six numbers in the exact order that they came up. Right? You don't. So it's actually 49C6 because the order doesn't matter. 49, which is substantially less, still awful, right? Still 13,983,816 chance of winning. One in that. And people can pick the same numbers, so you still can sometimes not win, right? Or you just split it. People, well, just because six numbers were picked doesn't mean you can't repick them, right? Someone else can get them too. So 13,983,816, I'm not With this one, 13 million, I forgot, So here we have an athletic council decides to form a subcommittee of seven council members to look at how funds raised should be spent on sports activities in the school. There are a total of 15 athletic council members. So there's 15 in total, of which nine are male, six are female. The subcommittee needs exactly three females. Now what we have to decide is permutation or combination. Does order matter or not matter? We are choosing seven council members to be on a subcommittee. Do those seven council members have jobs or anything? Are they any special to pick one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? No, so it's a combination. We know that. We know we have to use a C. Okay? If I was just picking a subcommittee of 15 members, I would go 15 or subcommittee of seven members from the 15, I go 15 C7, right? That would be my answer if I was just picking seven people. Do you agree? I didn't care what gender they were. But this time it says it has to be exactly three females. So what does that mean? Exactly three females. I need seven people. Three females and four males. So I would need three females and four males. We agree? So in order to get a male, you have to choose it from the males. And to get a female, you have to choose from the females. Just like if you need an actor, you have to choose from the actors. And the actors choose from the actresses. Just like defense has to come from defense. And forwards has to come from forwards. And centers have to come from centers. And wingers have to come from wingers, etc. Okay? So if we want to guarantee any females, how many females do we have to choose from? <clears throat> six. So we're going to do six, C, three. And means we what? Multiply. Males, how many do we have to choose from? Nine. C, four. And remember, N needs to be greater than R or equal to R. Correct? So this number has to be greater than this number or at least equal to it. I could go 9C9, right? Or 9C8, 9C7, 9C6, 9C0. But I can't go 10 or 9C10. I can't do that. 
So type that into your calculator and you can type it in all at once. Oops. If you have these ones, you have to arrow up after this to get it back up. Is it 9C5? Uh, 4? 5? 4. 9C4? So if you have these ones where it bumps the number down, you have to arrow up to get your multiplication to come up, right? Did everyone get that? You should be trying because I can type it in my calculator, but you'll be able to type it into your calculator. So if they want a specific um, gender other thing, you have to choose genders from genders. If they, the next one's cards. If they want a specific, if they want like three hearts, then you have to choose hearts from hearts, diamonds from diamonds, reds from reds, blacks from blacks, okay? If they want something specific, you have to choose it from the options that it has. So in a standard deck, there are 52 cards. There are four suits, spades, clubs, diamonds, and hearts, which means there's 13 in each suit. Because if I do 52 divided by four, I get 13. Each suit has 13 cards, right down here. Two suits are black. The spades and clubs are black. Two suits are red. The diamonds and hearts are red. Base cards are considered jacks, queens, and kings. So, poker is a card game played with a deck of 52 cards. They want to know how many different five-card poker hands are possible. Now, in poker and in most card games, Order of cards coming into your hand doesn't matter because you literally put them in your hand and what's the very first thing you do with them? Most of the time. You organize them. You can move them however you want. If you're playing war, then order, then you have, like, the order matters, right? If you're playing war because you have no choice. You have to play them in the order they are. But most card games, you get the five cards and then you move them around however you want. Uno, anything you play, Skippo, anything like that, you're moving your cards around, right? Often putting suits together or putting numbers together, it's hard to go from high to low. But the first thing you do is move your cards, so order doesn't matter with cards. Okay? Card hands, order doesn't matter. Once you can put it in your hand, you can move it. So we have five card poker hands. So those, order those five that they get handed to you, does it matter what order they give them to you? No, because you put them in your hand, you can play them in whatever order you want back, right? So, how many cards do I have to choose from in total? Does it ask for anything specific in here? Hearts, diamonds, clubs, red, black, anything? Nope. So I have all of them to choose from then, right? Because it's not answering anything specific. So it's going to be 52 C combination, because order doesn't matter. How many am I choosing? Five. Five card poker hands. I'm choosing five cards. 52. C5. 2,598,960. Is that right? I can't remember it. That's my brain there. So that's actually the maximum number of five card hands you can get, right? Nothing specific in them. That literally is the most. That's the most I can get possible of any five card hand out of a 52 deck of cards because I gave no restrictions to it. It could be any, any card, any five. So what happens if I start restricting? I better get smaller numbers than this because this is maximum. This is no restriction. So if I'm restricting, my number better get smaller, right? So it's still a five card hand. In cards, so order still doesn't matter. So all of these are all going to be C's because it's a card hand, and I put the cards in my hand, and I can move them around. So the order doesn't matter. Okay? So they're all going to be C's. I want all diamonds. So in order to get diamonds, what do I have to choose from? Which one do I can guarantee getting diamonds? Choosing from? Diamonds. That's it. How many diamonds do I have? How many of each suit? Yeah. 13. So there's 13 in each suit. So I have 13 cards, but I'm choosing how many? So I have 13 diamonds, and I'm choosing how many? 
How many cards are in a hand, guys? Five. It's five card hands, right? I'm choosing five. I want them to all be diamonds. What's 13 C5? How much does he get? Next one. 1,287. Okay, we want four black cards and one red card. How many cards is that? Five, so that covers them all, right? So how many black cards are there? Half the deck is black, half the deck is red. There's 52 in the whole thing. 26. So we have 26 black cards. We choose four. And means we multiply. We need reds. 26 red and we choose one. See, I didn't arrow up, so I just broke it myself. The so next one we need three kings and two queens. How many kings are there? There's one in each suit. There's four. So we have four kings and we choose three. And how many queens? Four queens, right? One in each. Four queens and we choose two. Twenty-four. Does that make sense that it's smaller? Yeah? It should be a smaller card hand. I'm only choosing two kings and queens. Right? I'm really limiting the deck. The next one's where people error. I want I need three kings. I know that I'm gonna get a whole bunch of people getting this question wrong because they're gonna go four C three. Which is actually completely correct. The problem is what? I need two more cards. I need a five card hand, right? So if I have three kings and that's all I can have is three kings, I need two others. So I need three kings and two others. Make sure that you always have the amount that they need. So they need five cards, they need to have five cards. If I need a seven person subcommittee, I need seven people. If they say exactly two, two males, then I need five females. I need to make that seven person committee, right? So I need two others. So two others than kings. Not the three I used up. Other than kings, completely. I have to completely kick out all the kings. So there's 52 cards and if I kick out all the kings, I'm taking off four. I have 48 left. 48, choose two. Four thousand five hundred and twelve. How about four aces? Do I have five cards? No, I need four aces and one other. So I take all four aces and I choose four aces times one other. Hola. Late edition. Late edition? Yeah. But the best of the best? Is that what you're telling me? Yeah. You're promising this is like the perfect one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Criminal crime, you can't sit there because there's someone there. Yeah. Um, do you want to sit there? You can try that seat, and then if it sucks, we'll move you to a different one. How about that? You're literally at the end. Yeah. You can just breathe. You know, suck up oxygen. Thank you. I have no okay. success for you. Alright. <laughs> okay. Well, that's being recorded. Enjoy. <laughs> yeah? Uh, for, uh, for, would it not be 49? No, because you need to have three kings only. So that's the catch. Oh. People want to use 49, but when it says three kings, I can't chance getting a four. Oh. 
So I have to take off all four kings even though I'm only using up three. Yeah, good question. Okay, then here I need one other. So I take off all four aces, then I'm left with 48. Choose one. Now let's look at this. I go four mass C4. That's only one way to do that, right? Makes sense. I go get my four aces, I take them. One way, right? Now what if I do 48, choose one? That is not the right button. 48, choose one. 48 ways. How do you do that? I have 48 cards, I take one. I take one, I take a different one, take a different one, 48 times, right? So what's one times 48? 48. So that's why whenever you have 4C4, it's always 1. And when you have 48C1, it's 48. So you wouldn't even need your calculator for that. Five cards of the same suit. Does it say what suit? So it could be heart. It could be club. It could be spades. It could be diamonds, right? So I want five hearts. Or, why am I saying or? Five spades. Why am I not saying and? You can't have both. You have ten cards. I'd be sitting with five, five hearts and five spades, and I only can have five cards, right? So it's a, it's a case. It's an or. So what am I going to do with these? Add them. So how do I get hearts? How many hearts are there? Thirteen, and I'm choosing... 5. Or means plus. Spades. 13 and I'm choosing 5. Or 13 and I'm choosing 5 diamonds. Or 13 and I'm choosing 5 clubs. Or, what could I have just said? Multiplied by 4. Because there's 4 suits, right? I don't know. These ones you would just practice like the formula, um, filling in the formula like you did with those other ones. So NC1, we could go N factorial over N minus 1 factorial 1 factorial equals 15, right? You're just plugging it into the NCR formula. 1 factorial is just 1. So do we care about it? No. What if it was like a 5 factorial? Or a 4 factorial? Or a 3 factorial? It would become like, if it's 3 factorial, it would be a 6. What would you want to do with it to get it out of here? Multiply it up. Right? We'd multiply by 6. And then we can just do what we did last time, right? So these ones are homework. Just those three. And those are the answers to check it. So one, two, and four. Are the, do they show up on your paper? I think just didn't like fractions when I printed these. No fractions showed up. It was awesome. Okay. In a meeting, these ones show up as a written response. Okay? Because I'm going to make you do it algebraically. In a meeting, everyone shakes everyone, everybody else. Everyone shakes hands. I was like, everyone shakes everybody else. <laughs> Everyone shakes hands with everybody else. So each person shakes hands with everybody else, right? Shake. Done. How many hands come together when you do a handshake? You're not allowed to do them anymore. <laughs> Two. Does the order matter? This is where I used to have fun. I, I can't anymore. Hand shake your hands. Let's pretend I am. Hello, person in front of me. Fake imaginary human. Hi. This is like, how are you doing today? I'm oh, good. Okay, good. How? Okay, let's shake hands. Did it matter who got there first? No, it's still both my hands. It's just super creepy. But anyways, does the order matter of which these two happen? No. 
So it's going to be, when it's a handshake, it's going to be what? A uh, combination. It's also in this one that I'm teaching this combination. So it's a good chance. Yes, it's probably right. So it's going to be a combination because the two hands coming together, order doesn't matter, right? They form a handshake. Do you agree? Okay. So here it says, in a meeting, everyone shakes hands with everybody else. There are 66 handshakes in total. What did I not give you? I didn't give you N. I didn't give you the people, right? I gave you how many handshakes happened. I gave you how many the these happened, which is my R, right? If two people come together, that's my R. I did not give you how many people were there. I did not give you N. We agree? So we have N, C. What's this number going to be? How many am I choosing at a time to shake? How many hands come together in a handshake? Unless it's creepy and weird? Two. Yes. And it's going to equal how many handshakes? 66. So watch, whenever I give you a total, I'm legitimately usually making you find n. Algebraic. Using your formula. Which you guys can do. Right? You just have to be able to spot these. You have to spot that I gave you this type. I gave you the total. I gave you the number of handshakes. Because you need two, two hands together to make handshakes, right? Two people make handshakes, not one. It's weird. Like, hello, how are you? Like, it's not one. It's not three. It's like a triquetra of handshakes. That doesn't happen either. It's always two. So how many people are in the meeting? So we're trying to find N. Now, could you just plug in anything two and higher in your calculator and get the answer? Yeah, how many marks are you going to get for that? None, because it says... Show your work algebraically. Did you show any work algebraically? Nada. They might give you a little bit because you set it up. So we might give you like 0.5, right? That's still sucky, no matter how you look at it. What are we going to do? We're not going to do it that way. We're going to do it algebraically. So we're going to go and fill it into the NCR formula, which is N factorial, because this is my N. This is going to go in for my R's. So we get N factorial over N minus 2 factorial. 2 factorial equals 66, right? Just plugging it into that formula. You guys are good at these. You practice these. You did it with P. It's the same thing. The problem is, if you do this with P, you're saying that the handshake order matters. And so then if I came, this would be a different handshake than if that happens. Is that any different? No. So handshake order doesn't matter. I have to use a C, so don't use P by accident. 2 factorial is just the number 2. And what did I tell you to do right away with this number down here? Multiply it up. Get rid of it. So I'm going to get n factorial over n minus 2 factorial equals, what's 66 times 2? Then what do we do? Same work we did on the previous one, right? We're going to expand them. Which one's bigger, n factorial or n minus 2 factorial? n factorial. So we're going to get n, n minus 1, n minus 2 factorial over n minus 2 factorial equals 132. I stopped at the n minus 2 because they can do what? Cancel off. What's my next step always? This. Yes, distribution. That's. So I have to distribute these. So we're going to get n squared minus n equals 132. And then we're back to your awesome grade 11 teacher who said to you, every single time you have a squared with a normal variable, you have to always do what? You can't just solve for the variable. You always have to do what? Your teacher told you this. I know she did. Because I know how, I know what you had. You had. I know she told you this. You move everything to one side and get it equal to zero. That's the only way you can solve. When you have a variable that's squared with a variable that's not squared, the only way you can do that is if you move everything to one side and set it equal to zero. It's the only way. If not, you're sitting there staring at it. That's all you do. Okay? So I'm going to subtract the 132 over. What well, multiplies to give you 132 and adds to give you one? Yeah, one. one. 11 and 12, which one's negative? Negative 12. 
n minus 12, n plus 11 equals 0. And then I have n minus 12 equals 0, n plus 11 equals 0. This one's n equals 12. This one's n equals negative 11. And some people will say done. You're half done. This is a word problem. It doesn't. We have a negative 11 people. Does that make any sense? No. So we circle it, line through it, and say extraneous. Box this one. And then we want the people who are marking this to know what, that I actually know what the heck I just found. I found a number. It's great. But I, I want to know that you actually know what you found. The question says, how many people were in this meeting? You can now say there were... Well, people in this meeting. Then I'm like, dude, not only, like, I would just, like, if I was marking this on a diploma, I'd be like, this kid's awesome. They, like, showed all their work. Then even said extraneous. Then ended with a sentence. Boom. So I, feel, I don't even have to think about this one. And then we kind of show it to other people. Just like, look at this. And you're like, wow, that kid's amazing. And we're all just so proud of you. Okay? We want that to be you. Okay. So, um, how many people were there? There were. Don't just be like 12 people. No, let's, let's go sentence, you know? If you're like at the end, let's just really get it. So there were 12 people in the meeting. So the ones that are red are for today. The ones that are black are going to be for tomorrow. Okay. Um, if you finish these early and you actually have time, um, please work on that hand in. Remember, I posted it, the hand in assignment online. You can start working on it. All the permutations and all the fundamental counting principles that you guys can do. And basically all the combinations, unless it said at least at most. So unless it says at least or at most in the question, you can do every single question on that hand in except for binomial theorem questions. And they look way different. Like they're not word problem questions. They're like x plus 3a to the 7. Like they're totally not the same. So you can do every question on that assignment unless it says at least or at most. So I would start working on the assignment tonight too. Can I get you guys? Oops.